Okay, so iron deficiency often overlooked in adults, right? But it's often overlooked in infants and children as well. This happens all the time. You know, it often takes some major event, like say a seizure or say like my child's fainting all the time when they're when they cry or when they're under some kind of emotional exacerbation um, or they're eating dirt out of the pot, the plant pot or they're just getting sick all the time. And then finally, you know, a parent takes their child in to be evaluated. Uh, but by now, you know, the, the child, the family has already gone through so much duress. Um, and this is good. This can all be curtailed way ahead of time. Uh, cause even when often patients will go to a primary care doc, pediatrician and the iron deficiency component of things will be overlooked all the while, you know, the child is suffering and they're, they're looking at all kinds of crazy conditions and disease states when it's just simply iron deficiency, a lack of iron absorbed or coming into the diet. And toddlers and, and children, you know, often don't know the difference, uh, between tiredness, irritableness, whininess, not, not sleeping well, taking naps often. <clears throat> and even, even their, their caregivers often will, will chalk this up to, you know, that's just their personality. Uh, or, you know, they're probably teething. They, they just, these, this, you know, this, this young child of mine just needs more sleep compared to his peers or his siblings. Uh, or even, uh, you know, their, their skin tone is just a lot lighter than the rest of my kids, but that's just, that's their natural skin complexion. Um, and maybe it is, um, or maybe, maybe it's iron deficiency all along because this is not a, um, a you know, a, a needle in a haystack kind of thing. This is a common issue. And even adults, you know, we often look iron efficiency, iron deficiency as it, uh, you know, it comes on so slow, often so insidiously, um, unless we've had some major bleed and that can, uh, you know, make it, it's, make it hard for us to realize, whoa, we are way underperforming. And the same thing happens with kiddos. You know, they don't even realize they're way underperforming um, until maybe they're a teenager and like, man, I'm just getting short of breath all the time and those kind of things. So this is why we got to watch it for our kids. We got to be, we got on the lookout for them and make sure we take care of this. So many children, uh, one of the reasons they can become iron deficient is they go from breast milk to cow's milk. And if the mother was low in iron reserves, you know, in the womb or during breastfeeding, then her baby will also be low uh, when they come into the world. Uh, and, um, you know, and while she's breastfeeding as well, you know, the baby's gonna be low. So then you switch the child, the baby, to say cow dairy, and, you know, they, they consume cow's milk consistently. Guess what? they are now at a very high risk of iron depletion and any iron deficiency that couples with that. And then all the, all the potential problems related to iron deficiency. Uh, and this is because dairy milk uh, can cause micro traumas to the digestive tract. And this happens about 40% of, of children. They get this, this micro traumas, which basically means they get little bits of, little bits of bleeding uh, all along their digestive tract. And if you have this, if you're, they're losing, losing this little bits of blood, all day long, every day, then um, guess what? They're losing iron with that loss of blood. And this is simply a side effect of consuming dairy for some children. Along with that, iron can also be bound up by calcium, which is found in cow's milk, and casein, which is the main, dairy, the main protein in dairy products. So both of these, you know, if they bind to iron, they're gonna inhibit its absorption. And this is, a, this is significant, even for, you know, toddlers and children who consume red meat on a regular basis, because uh, it's, it's pretty rare that a child is basically going to consume enough red meat to make up for potential iron loss uh, from the you know, intestinal microtraumas or from the, uh, you know, amount, amount of binding that's happening related to dairy intake and the calcium and the casein uh, consistently grabbing onto the iron and making it so that it, it can't make its way uh, through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream and to be used as a, an iron source. So, and, and many parents, you know, they wait until their children are older to give them re red meat as well, just because it's, you know, they're afraid they might choke on it. Um, and it's simply easier to give a child a, pot, a bottle of milk um, 
uh, of dairy milk or yogurt, these kind of things, than it is to you know cut up a little bunch of little pieces of red meat and then um, watch them eat all that red meat kind of thing. So it's totally reasonable that this could be this way. And don't feel bad about it at all. Um, but uh, there's a lot of issues that go into why you know a, a child might be consuming a lot of dairy in an otherwise fantastic home. So that convenience factor is a huge deal. You know, giving a giving a baby a bottle or a toddler a bottle of milk, you know, it's just a lot simpler than sitting down and feeding them for a long time because it takes a long time to feed a baby, um, especially if you're trying to get them, you know, to to chew and masticate the food and that kind of thing. And it's not just like a, a puddingish, saucy um, like substance. All right. So the third reason this can be an issue is that um, in dairy, uh, there's not much iron. You know, it's a very low iron food. So if you have iron deficiency and then you're taking, you're consuming a calorically dense, whole nutritious food like cow milk, that's highly satisfying and loaded with calories, um, which can help help the child grow uh, while at the same time that that food is devoid of iron, very low in iron, then, um, you know, you're, you're, you're pushing out of the way all these other foods they potentially would eat that do have plenty of iron because the, you know, there's no more appetite for these foods. We've been, we've been eating dairy, cow, cows, cow products this whole time. So that's kind of like a double hit. You got a bunch of highly nutritious, high value food and dairy um, that, has, that has a low iron content, which leads us to basically pushing the meats, maybe a lot of the greens um, that would contain our, our, our heme and non-heme iron and you know, pushing those out of the way. So one cup of cow's milk contains 300 milligrams of calcium and this that really that one cup that 300 milligram 300 milligrams of calcium is the threshold at which calcium concentration begins to inhibit iron absorption uh so that's, that's unfortunate right so if you're drinking 300 milligrams of, of calcium or dairy cow milk then you're, you're you're beginning to significantly inhibit your your iron uptake so consider you know if your child is consuming a glass or a bottle of milk at say breakfast at lunch, at dinner, uh, as well as at snack times, then they're likely having some significant intestinal iron blockage going on. Uh, and they're, they're just not gonna absorb the iron they should be absorbing. And even though they may have, you know, say red meat in their diet or potentially even be supplementing with iron, but they're just not gonna get it if there's, you know, three glasses, a large glass of milk going in a day. So consider not only the microtrauma from the dairy, um, but there's also the excess binding of iron from the, the calcium, the casein, and uh, you know, you know, some children will even have certain genetic variants that uh, permit them to absorb iron. Even amongst all that, um, they just, you know they absorb iron really efficiently than other children. But uh, if your child doesn't happen to be that way, then you know they they could be in trouble. So one other thing I would mention is that uh, febrile seizures, you may have heard that, where that's basically where a child has a seizure related to a high fever, a fast spike in, in their body temperature, you know, when they have a viral infection kind of thing. And there's a, there's a very significant link to febrile seizures and iron deficiency in children. So having witnessed a febrile seizure in my own daughter at about 60 months of age, uh, those, those are traumatic and you know no child no parent wants to uh, uh, go through that because it definitely leaves a significant impression and a, a you know sense of helplessness if you've ever had a seizure or been around some of the seizure so if we can keep iron levels sufficient then that gives the body so much more margin to work with when we have fevers and you, you we can be so much more comfortable that our child has a fever fantastic great immune system is doing its job and they're probably not going to go into a seizure state, even though a febrile seizure is generally, you know, completely benign. Uh, it, it is a scary situation. So consider getting a CBC test done, an iron test done, a ferritin level chest test done. These are super simple tests, super inexpensive, uh, and they can ensure if there's if you have any thoughts that potentially your child has low iron, ensure that they don't have low iron, and if they do, you can take care of it. Um, and if your child has had a febrile seizure then uh, you definitely want to get those tests done to make sure that's not the cause. Uh, because uh, you know, the amount of milk consumed by the child is going to affect whether or not iron is sufficient or iron may be insufficient. 
And you know, if your child is iron deficient, then you want to get on it right now. You don't want to wait because there's all these, you know, growth properties related to iron and immune properties related to iron and oxygen circulation related to iron. So repleting is huge right away. And this will, this will likely require some, you know, form of iron supplementation um, and, you know, increasing red meat because you're not, you know, it's probably not enough greens you could possibly eat uh, to get enough iron, especially as, as a child. And then um, reducing the cow's milk intake. And we want to get that down to, you know, probably like less than 16 ounces per day until your iron levels are optimized. And even if you're an adult and you, you pound iron or pound, uh, you know, dairy products all the day, you might want to consider if I'm having trouble getting my iron levels up, maybe I should slow down on my dairy and see if that helps get me back where I need to get to. So I know there's so many things to consider as a parent in relation to raising our kids and, you know, them experiencing optimal health. Uh, but we can ensure that having enough iron is not one of those things that we need to, um, or it is what is one of those things we can ensure that and that's like something we don't have going on in the background that isn't taken care of because it's easy to test for and symptomatically you can you can look at your child and just go through some of the symptoms we talked about and make sure that's not what they're experiencing. All right, I'm Dr. Matt. Hope this is super helpful. Like, share, subscribe, send this out to any of your your family members, your or your uh, uh, you know parents out there that you're, that you're, that are friends of yours who who may have children in the situation or that may their child may have had a febrile seizure. All right, talk to you guys later.